Hello all, my name is Janil. Let us begin shear strength of soil. Shear strength is very much important phenomena in soil mechanics. When the soil is loaded, the stresses in the soil gets induced. As these stresses gets up to it, its limit, the shear displacement takes place. Now what is shear strength? So, shear strength is nothing but the ability or property of resistance to continuous shear displacement of soil particles is known as shear strength of soil. Let us begin understanding shear strength of soil with a very simple but fundamental phenomena or mechanism of shear resistance. Now, you can see in this figure there is a block lying on the soil surface. Now, there are forces normal to the block. This is N for normal forces and this is tau. That is, uh, we can say tangential force. Right? So, a body is under normal as well as tangential pressure or stresses. So, the element is under two type of forces, parallel and perpendicular. In other form, if we can see, we can see two bodies are in contact with each other, like this one body and second body, under normal as well as tangential forces. Same way, if we want to analyze it like a friction problem, we can uh, solve this like as normal and tangential are having an angle phi. The phi is angle or coefficient of angle of friction. Now, let us see it numerically to understand shear strength. Now, tau max, when it will reach to tau max, when the body will move, it will reach up to maximum stress. After that, the body will start moving. So, tau max can be written as mu into n, where mu is coefficient of friction and n is the force normal to it. Now, from the friction, mu is taken as 10 into 5, where phi is what? Phi is coefficient of angle of friction. Tau max can also be written as n into 10 phi. So, this is very basic simple mechanism of shear resistance of any body XYZ any body. To understand shear strength, let us move to more technicalities. Shear strength is basically derived from three basic items. One, cohesion or adhesion. Second one, frictional resistance. And third one is resistance due to interlocking. Now, what is cohesion? What is adhesion? So, we have already discussed cohesion is the bond or the attraction force between the same particles of the same material. When adhesion is the attraction force but on which the different type of materials or different type of material particles that is cohesion or adhesion. So, shear strength is derived from these attraction force. Same with frictional resistance. When your body, when any XYZ body is resisting the movement, it will create frictional resistance. And that is how it will govern shear strength. And third one is resistance due to interlocking of particles. What is interlocking now? Now, whenever whichever the type of soil is there but there are some bonds in between soil particles these bonds are getting interlocked when it is under some type of force and that will give you shear strength so basic uh, three ingredients for shear strength are these now let us understand basic terms as internal friction and angle of internal friction so, first of all, internal friction, the frictional resistance between the soil particles which is directly proportional to the normal stress is known as internal friction. When the angle, whichever 
it is representing the internal friction that is angle of internal friction now angle of internal friction is dependent or it is variable with different things like shape of particles if your particles are having different shapes the angle of internal friction will change according to that same way if roughness of surface is not uniform the angle of internal friction will again change same way denseness of the soil if your soil is very less dense or very highly dense it will have variation of angle of internal friction so it depends on these factors now let us understand mohr's circle of stress according to mohr in any strained material in any strained body there must be three mutually perpendicular axes which are under only and only direct stresses and no shearing stresses are there so these three axes are known as principal axes and uh, planes uh, going through that are known as principal planes now most major stress from all these three uh, stresses is known as major principal stress and minimum of them is known as minor principal st stress and the remaining one is known as intermediate principal stress and uh, as we have talked all the corresponding planes are known as major intermediate and minor principal planes now let us understand with a figure now this is mohr's circle a mohr circle is nothing but a graphical representation of a locus of point sigma and tau so you can see a graph between tau and sigma in this uh, there is a circle which is known as mohr's circle let us understand elements of it one by one in this mohr's circle uh, the lines which are lying horizontal we can say o to b o to b is showing major principal stress where this vertical line is showing minor principal stress or we can say o b is showing major principal stress as well as o a we can say o a is showing minor principal stress value now in here nomenclature you can also see that sigma 3 is known as minor principal stress and whatever the maximum of all three uh, stresses will be there is known as major principal stress and is written as sigma 1 sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 is shown as the center distance to the center of the mohr circle uh, here uh, this gap is taken as sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 so from any graphical presentation you can derive the value of sigma 1 sigma 3 and as well as resultant stress now here od od which is having angle beta is making a resultant stress of them same way you can see oe and de as oe is showing normal stress and DE is showing shear stress on the soil so this is a graphical representation let us understand it more thoroughly from this explanation for an example let us take a soil a soil uh, sample like this in this shape if it is under some pressure sigma 1 from vertical or we can say normal and uh, from horizontal it is zero pressure so shearing uh, is zero and only direct forces uh, or direct pressure is applied so uh, we can see here a uh, principal plane being generated so uh, in two diagram uh, figure we can see one point here let us talk about that point that pole point uh, principal stresses and uh, minor and major principal stresses here you can see the same figure here i have not written zero uh, shearing uh, forces zero shearing pressure 
but only I have shown direct, right? So sigma 1 is only there. Now, if we can cut the section and see this point, it will be having sigma 1 direct stress and tau, shear stress as 0. So there is only sigma 1. So this plane must be a principal plane. Now, let us see it on tau versus sigma plot. Here, if I talk about this, here, if a locus of that point will be tau 0 and sigma something, x, y, z, some amount, right? Let us assume some point on the graph like I have shown here. So, this point is showing stress on these point right now. Moving forward, if I apply stress from these direction and I see principal stress is there. Remember that I can only take principal plane and principal stress as and when there is only direct stresses. No shearing stresses should be there. So, now the point will be having some that are sigma and some tau. There will be like this point. After that, this point will be there. After that, now gradually you can see the graph is moving as I am changing the plane. Now, if I stop it here, I will have sigma 1 or direct stress as 0, but shearing stress is also 0 here. So, I am getting origin as the point of the graph. Now, moving more further, I will have point like this here. Tau and sigma both will be in negative. If previous direction was positive, they will be going in a negative direction according to graph only. Moving further, I will get like points like this. And coming back again, I will have a circle, a complete circle. Here, sigma 3 has been written and which is showing you a minus stress. But at this point, tau should be 0. So, at this point again, sigma 1 will be there, which is major principal stress. Now, it is very simple. The more circle you can see it on the slide. Now, you can see uh, a question popping up in the screen. Very basic question. Now, what is the stress at this point? If you are asked that what will be the stress at this origin pole point? There is a single answer to that. That is this circle. Stresses will be this circle. And this circle is known as Mohar's circle of stress. And Mohar also states that if the soil sample is lying like that and sigma 1 and sigma 3 are acting on that, the values of sigma tau and sigma r can be stated as sigma is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 plus sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 into cos 2 alpha. Tau is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 into sin 2 alpha and resultant stress sigma r is equal to under root sigma square plus tau square. So, Mohr derived all these formulas and they are very much fundamental to that. So, we have to remember these formulas. So, that's it for this lecture. Thank you.